You know, about uh, a little over 20 years ago, I was chairman of the county commission, and uh, we were trying to figure out how to save ranch land in Carson Valley. And we didn't want to save all the ranch land, but we thought there were appropriate spots that in the floodplain and such that we wanted to see stay in agriculture and part of our community and lifestyle forever. And we kept thinking, somebody should do that, somebody should do that. And then literally I was back at meetings in Washington, D.C. with Senator Richard Bryan, who was our Nevada Senator at the time. My son worked for him at, at that time as well. And while I was there, I got a call from Senator Paul Laxalt's office, who had been Nevada's Senator years ago and an old family friend, uh, also Basque. And Paul had me come to his office, and lo and behold, while we were talking there, a, a woman walked in from the American Land Conservancy and said, Jacques, I want to hire you. And Paul Laxalt said, yes is the right answer. And uh, so I started with her, and it turns out uh, after about a year, I realized something was awry, and uh, I loved working there, but our, our leader, uh, Executive Director Harriet Burgess, ended, ended up getting early onset Alzheimer's. And so I went out on my own, created Legacy Land and Water at that time and uh, and been at it since. I was interested in conservation easements when I was ranching here and I, I ran a family ranch for 35 years and started to learn more about conservation easements. And in 1996 here in Douglas we hired a firm out of Boulder, Colorado to update our master plan. And uh, the leader of that firm, Don Elliott, ended up being uh, head of the National Planning Association and he started to uh, basically send me information on conservation easements and I thought wow what a concept and what a conservation e easement is is you pay a landowner for all of their development rights and uh, they, they get compensated for that and then they keep ranching in perpetuity so it's a wonderful solution to a complicated problem and I always say conservation easements are the only permanent planning tool that I'm aware of. A few years ago, uh, the county manager at that time, T. Michael Brown, uh, had a, we had a meeting and I said, T. Michael, if we, if we don't do something, the BLM has 10,000 acres of land in Douglas County that's slated for disposal, which is basically one day they set up an auction and they auction off to private developers that 10,000 acres. And it's a big chunk of, of land uh, to the east of East Valley Road here in Carson Valley. And then there would be no control. It gets developed, uh, things happen that none of us want to see happen to that 10,000 acres. And I said, we should get an act of Congress to make sure that land doesn't go that direction and get developed, because it's, it's somewhat distant from town. It, it ought not to be developed. And so we hatched a plan, basically, for Douglas County to do a land bill. And in that land bill, when it, when it gets passed, that land transfers to Douglas County. It's about 8,000 acres. And the county can do trails, parks, uh, attenuation basin, basins to hopefully uh, lessen the flood risk out on East Valley and even parts of East Minden and Gardnerville are in the floodplain because of the washes that come in from there. So the county en engineer at the time, Mahmoud Azad, said let's do some attenuation basins. We need that land and we can uh, do them fairly inexpensively. And so uh, we got the land bill going and it's taken way longer than any of us wanted it to, uh, but nonetheless uh, that's probably conservatively $120 million worth of land that the county would receive for free. A few years ago, uh, Christopher Bentley approached me and had me come into his office, and I actually had an office down the hall from him in the Farmers Bank building. And uh, he, he wanted to uh, figure out what to do with some of these old historic buildings. His father bought the, the Minden Mill in 1978 when the Dangberg Company and the Dangberg Ranch uh, dissolved. And he never quite knew what to do with it. Mr. Bentley was always afraid that maybe that old brick building would, uh, in an earthquake, would tip over and, and, you know, people might be in the street next door. It just was a precarious situation, he thought. But he never quite figured out what to do with it. And his son, Chris, came along, who loves old buildings, loves uh, making them special. And I think at the Minden Mill has created a resounding success for a building that I never thought would still exist. Uh, here it is rebuilt, it's structurally enforced with steel. Uh, the Foley family, who has extensive holdings in the, in the wine business and understands, I think, the distillery business has recently acquired it. I think it's a wonderful amenity to Douglas County, and it is a destination and unique for all of Nevada. And so I hope it uh, continues on in a successful manner, and I believe it will. And one of my first tasks that Chris uh, kind of 
mentioned to me is, you know, let's let's get some water from Minden. It's very special. It it it, it filters through the valley. It's amazingly clean. And so I helped, uh, and I no negotiated the effort to obtain uh, the first well in Minden uh, for water use at the Minden Mill. So it's kind of a fun little uh, part of that package. I hope the efforts continue to preserve these very historic ranches. I had the uh, profound luck, really, of uh, helping protect uh, the Van Sickle Station Ranch recently, which is the third homestead in Nevada. Years ago, I had the great fortune of helping conserve in perpetuity ranch number one, which is Nevada's first land claim. Matter of fact, that uh, land claim occurred 13 years before Nevada became a state. We we're part of the Utah Territory. What the future looks like, I hope, is, is more that land conservation, especially of land, farmland and ranch land that's in the floodplain. And it's, it's very dangerous to develop there, and yet it occurs. Uh, and some places, when we get really large floods like we had in 1997, some of, those, some of those houses may be isolated for a week or two at a time. And again, uh, our population is, is always is getting older here, and uh, I, we don't want to put folks in harm's way. And I think the best way to do that is to forever protect that land, and let's develop where it's appropriate near town and on high ground. You know, I, 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 I am very honored to have gotten this award. I, I, I love the work I do. I have not worked a, a day in my life for the past 20 years doing this, this work. And to be recognized for that is, is simply uh, an honor for me. And uh, I'm very appreciative. And uh, this county has always been near and dear to me and, and always will be. And uh, I think uh, hopefully this is a work in progress and I, I do hope it continues on and we protect more ranch land in perpetuity.